Welcome to the back of Dave's head, because live scene full webcam is... There we go. Not the camera we wanted. Oh, Dave, you know, things have just been going awry for everyone. You know, there's actually been uh, a spate of robberies in the area. Uh, it's hit jewelry stores especially hard. A local jewelry store was actually robbed by a guy at gunpoint who was wearing a Sonic the Hedgehog mask, who took a hundred rings from them. The owner was quoted as saying, if I ever catch that guy, I'm going to kill him. Twice if I have to. It's an extra lives joke. Oh, I get it, because he stole over a hundred, so he got a second life. And here. Welcome to the Nerd Glasses <laughs> Podcast, everybody. I'm Butter. I'm Dave, man. And yeah, we watched the Sonic the Hedgehog movie last night, um, which super enjoyable. I don't know if you want to hit that one off the bat. I know you have something that you said was some sort of concern that was a little timed. I don't know if you want to nail that one first. So, um... But, I, but we've got that. We've uh, We've got... A uh, discussion of uh, Carvana because it's just geeky enough to uh, roll that in. Um, I mean, we have... the man bought a car online and now has a vehicle. Yeah, to so me, that's, 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 that's geeky really enough to freaky. cover. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, and we're also covering a community topic uh, regarding choosing power-ups in games, but that will be later. Dave, what have you got for us right off the bat? Um... So you want to try the food item? Yeah, off you, the you, bat? you said you know you're like, hey, I'm gonna push it because it's something where freshness is a concern. I'm like, well, let's be fresh right off the bat here, more so than I normally am with jokes uh, from the get go. Okay. We have napkins. This is already concerning to me. It should be concerning for you and the folks at home. Mm -hmm. um, Logan, would you like to be called in on the uh, to pinch hit since? Uh, our friend uh, is really is to. at the gym. I would I would love at the gym? to include you um, in this. <gasps> what is this? Now I'm gonna try to find. It's the camera right, right there. If you place it right on top, if we do this, this will work right here. Okay. Actually. Okay. Hi everybody. We're moving. Because uh, it pisses everyone off when we move the cameras, but they need to get moved because show ideas and this is quick setups because Tom and Dan do a great job letting these things to be set up that they can be adjusted quickly. Yay. So, in my hands are what, chat? Those look those look like donuts, Dave. Is there particular... Are you in chat? Are you were I am include actually, the audience oh, here. Right, hold on. <laughs> do I need to get in chat too? I mean, if you would like to, if you have a Twitch handle, I don't even do you even follow Boder and I on our own Twitch? Not to mm, mm. there. Chat responded. Those look like donuts, Dave. Very. You are correct, <laughs> Boderbug. Very astute observation. Now I would like the both of you to try one of these donuts. Are, are, are you excluding your, yourself? I mean, that one looks. I, I'll split that one with you. I actually had one of these okay. earlier, which is why I changed. Is one enough? The thing I was going to get. Yes. It. Well, one was quite oh substantial. My, that is certainly. I'm glad I did this now to get that dripping. Everything. Oh you know what? I'm gonna take a little bit up top too. I'm just, I'm just gonna do that right up. We're, uh, we're getting nice and disgusting. Because, so please. Because I wolfed down a couple of whoppers in the park. Now lot. there is nothing of questionable uh, flavoring or or ingredients in the donuts. Just as a heads up, this is not like a goof. They are. It's they not are like they're cayenne pepper. <laughs> like <laughs> they are just super fresh. Dave, why have you brought us donuts today? As I super enjoy this and have the sugar to lead me through at least nerd classes, if not also Citadel afterwards. Now I'm very excited that you say. What What do you think of that donut? Do you enjoy it? Pretty good. You know what freaked me out about those donuts? I got them. Jesus. I know. No way. The spoiler alert that these donuts are from The Colonel, Kentucky Fried Chicken, of all places. Wow. I mean, I'm that guy in that real, real people, not actors. No, that's, that's tasty. That's good. I'm, I'm more freaked out about the fact that I ordered it today on a whim. And uh, so if either of you want the, the container for this now... Um, that it won't get spoiled as to what it is. Oh, no, both of them are gone. All right. No, nope, they're gone. Well, I am very happy that uh, for the first week in a row of the things that I brought on the program for us to eat, uh, they were actually eaten and not just me uh, uh, scarfing them down. We need more. 
Oh, I'm gonna Morgans. straight go back and wash my hand. I already have a full glaze going on here. That was pretty good, Dave. Um, yeah, that's um, that's yeah, that, that was great. Um, I will gladly vamp also, about some like, news. Do not, do not forget how many of those mega stuff, quad stuff Oreos I had. Okay, so that's, that's very not true. The first time something's really gone. That's very true. Um, what I will do while you are uh, washing your hands is I will discuss a little bit of gaming news uh, on the side that is not a conversation you and I had necessarily um, okay. I will discussed. Be in uh, what the uh, community would refer to as a GIF, though you can argue the pronunciation on your own. Oh, don't do that. So, Dave, is this like, are those donuts like limited time? Is that the I have a feeling that they are. They are a part of a... A, a thing called like uh, K uh, chicken and donuts because uh, they had chicken and waffles. Great, now I have to go to KFC. Says Steven Dragon, it's worth it. They're freaky good. They are good. Um, although I will say, don't let them get cold because then they're just like Dunkin' Donut donuts where they're just cake, which is fine. But it's well, it's cake. On the donut you get from donuts. That's true. That's very true. Don't get the glaze. Those are bad. So, um. I don't know about you folks at home, but uh, it's it's sick season here in New upstate New York, the Northeast, and um, this coronavirus thing is is really affecting a lot of folks and things around there. Um, the Overwatch League had to once again cancel and reschedule further events in the future. Um, Oh my god, all those other articles disappeared. Uh, Sony has pulled out of PAX East, which starts yep. in a couple of days, for f for protecting their staff and uh, uh, things like that. Yeah, so like there was the... Th and that was actually announced last week when um, like the first uh, coronavirus case in Boston was announced. But it's also like... It's a bigger thing in Japan, so it may have been a form of self-quarantine. It's it's just good business all around not to send your employees off to get sick. Um, the third thing was Or to was send your that sick employees off to infect your fan base. Kojima Productions uh, actually canceled their uh, participation in the 2020 Game Developers Conference, which is less so much of a public walks around, sneezes on everything, and touches things, yeah. and more of a... Other industry professionals go to one place and they all discuss their craft. So, folks out there, just as a as an aside before we get into into the Sonic movie, wash your damn hands. Hot soap, hot water, hot soap. even hot even hot warm soap. <laughs> Don't use hand hand sanitizer. Is not a substitution for washing your hands. Well, you wash you your hands. filthy filthy folks. Wash your hands on hand sanitizer. <laughs> Just, that's how you make super bugs. Wash them, okay? Wash your hands. You know, wash your hands and like, be you know, do the do all the cough into you. I mean, and and some of the stuff that is. Uh, Don't dab. Be Batman. Do I have to sing the happy birthday song while I wash my hands? No. No, you don't. If you use hot water and soap and you cover the whole surface area, in fact, if you just surgical gloves it up the arms, you don't have to do happy birthday. Spoiler alert. If you're healthy and you know it, wash your hands anyway. <laughs> uh. I know, when you thought you were going to tune into a program about nerdy stuff, you didn't expect to get yelled at by nerds about Singing washing your nursery hands. nursery rhymes. Uh, okay. But that's why you tune in and you follow here. For the Logan, Logan making sure to do his part to keep insane games germ-free. Germ-free. Mm. <sighs> Not quite what I expected. Hello, love, Alec. Nice to see you. Make your voices heard in chat, folks, by the way. We are so excited to have you here. Yep. So, so yeah, the Sonic uh, if you, movie. If you chat on any of the platforms that we're on, Mixer, Facebook, uh, Twitch, and YouTube, Dave will see it over here. I'm keeping an eye on Twitch chat right here. Yes, we saw the Sonic the Hedgehog movie last night. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a, it was a good time. Uh, there were very few scenes that I was like, oh no, which for me in a comedy movie is like really good. Most of the time I'm like, this is awful. I hate this kind of thing. I, I, I empathize too much with the awkwardness. Um, but no, it's, it, it worked really well. It was good visual. There was only one part that it was like, he's not actually there with them. 
and it's the awkward bit at the end where this found family, <gasps> and one guy puts. His oh arm my god! That was the only time around his his wife with Sonic in between them, and it's this very awkward. Thing. It's clear that the original model of Sonic was, was taller. taller, and so that fit better. Which, all of a sudden, makes me really appreciate what they did uh, and how they cheated things for the eyelines in the rest of the movie. Um, We're not going to discuss plot in so much as it was a video game-related movie, and it actually made attempts to explain the mechanics of the universe. That's the I, only I, plot structure thing I you get. I love the robot. I mean, you're, it's, you know the plot structure. You've watched the trailers. Hold on. Going off of just the trailers, Sonic is a misfit and is discovered by human lead, um, who, by the way, has a wife, didn't appear in the trailers at all. She's fantastic. Um, and they go on adventures for Sonic to be able to do something that he needs to do but they end up becoming bestest of friends, and they become a found family. All stuff that you know in the trailer. Meanwhile, Robotnik is chasing them, and eventually dons the, the red jacket and everything like that, and gets in a flying thingy. And so going off of that... I was very sad that my favorite, my favorite Jim Carrey line from that movie was actually more of a throwaway line than I thought it was going to be. Okay, what was it? And it was... Uh, it... You know what? Now I forget the I forget the setup, but it was along the lines of like the time for action is over. Now it is time, time to, to press push. buttons. Yes, like yeah. it became a meme, and it it's actually mean, just kind of a throwaway, throwaway line. But that's the best. Like I like it when it's not. You know, the opposite of that is you like pain. Try wearing a corset. Oh my god, everyone was sick of the line before the movie even fucking came out. So like, no, I like that where it's just some random line that becomes the thing. Um... And so, like, that was that was really fun. Um, you know, they did a good job of just, like, little homages. I mean, obviously, there was the... <gasps> the Sonic music played as, like, a down-tempo uh, piano thing towards the end. Yay! Uh, but, like, uh, having an actual Robotnik boss battle, which they did well. Again, I'm, I don't want to spoil, spoil the actual things. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, FPS. We appreciate that. Um... And, yeah, uh, it was, like, they... I don't want to spoil specifics, but, yes, there was a Sonic the Hedgehog-style boss battle against Robotnik. And it worked really well. Um, it was... I had a good time watching Sonic the Hedgehog. And it's a movie that I think did strong in its first weekend. Because, I mean, there were a lot of people that were interested in seeing it because of the background of how they changed the design of the character and oh, everything yeah. like that. Um, we went Monday night at 7.30. Those attending were me... Demon Dragon, Dave, uh, and, and Dave, I forget your other half's Twitch handle. Uh, hers is, she's not really, just, okay. just my fiance. Um, yeah, uh, and then two people way in the back of the theater, and that was the entire theater for the BTX over here. So, uh, it, it, it definitely, I think that the attendance was like, Sonic, okay, cool, what's up next? I mean, that's not really, like, I'm very happy with how that movie was, because I know that you and I are old as dirt, uh, and Logan can't relate to this, but the last video game movie that had such an iconic character that came out in theaters was... Mario! And it was bad! And it was bad, and it was bad, and it was bad! And so this I one... I would argue Lara Croft is... <coughs> uh... Well, maybe not as iconic as Mario, but certainly an iconic video game character. But yeah, like she's a lot an of the iconic video, video game, game character. But her, she's an action film. Like hers, yeah. hers had a plot that you could build into a film. Yeah. Whereas Mario and Sonic I mean, are kind of like they created a plot out of whole cloth, like, and they did a great job of it. So Pikachu is not iconic. <laughs> Demon Crash Dragon. Bandicoot should be next. <laughs> Demon Dragon, in my opinion. Oh, there we go. D Pikachu is iconic. iconic. Detective Pikachu, who was the entire point of that film, is in fact iconic in its own way. But I did not grow up with Detective Pikachu. I did not have yes, feelings but I would of, say of if you grew up attachment. with Pikachu, I think Detective Pikachu is still. And I'm even... excited for that, but I didn't grow up that way, so I can't. For mm. my personal money, I, I, grew, I grew up with <laughs> Pikachu, and I was super excited for Detective Pikachu. Didn't see it that. in theaters. Didn't really want to. Not gonna lie. Um. <laughs> There's a lot of physical abuse of you going on. I, I, the episode of 
uh, Prey came out yesterday. Well, both the first episodes of Prey came out yesterday on my channel, youtube.com slash boaterbug. And there's one where Dave knew a thing was going to happen, and I didn't. And I really didn't like the thing that happened. And I'm like, you knew that was going to happen. And he was like, yep, and then I slapped him. It was worth it. <laughs> What's up, Magikarp? Good to see you in chat. Mario Bros. was an iconic movie. It's iconic! What's up, Anti-Klaus Prime as well? My god, we're filling in the cast of characters. It's it, Mario. All of the movies that have video game plots are iconic in their own way because it's an execution of something that we have as, as video game folks in here and then the filthy casuals got to digest it as well. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so Sonic, great. Um, moving on. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Um... What do you want to hit next? Uh, there was actually, um, oh, I was I was gonna bring up another thing, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll let you carry it next. No, I was just gonna say, the thing I was most excited about with the Sonic movie was that they explained, or they had references to all the video game things. Yep. Yep. Um, a lot of the motions and a lot of the fighting in the movie was was only reminiscent of the Sonic games. And by that I mean the original Genesis yeah, era Sonic yeah. games. In fact, not the most your... disappointing thing in the whole movie was that uh, while they showed a Sega logo at the start of the movie, it wasn't just like 16 bits oh. Sonic running back and forth. Sega! Nope, That's I, I was wanted. even more mad, and that reminds me, because next time we see a film for this, I'm going to write it down. I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I almost forgot. I was, not going to lie, a little bit pissed when the Sega logo came out, um, and it wasn't Saga! Like, because <laughs> I missed that one. That's what? the iconic one that would come on on commercials and things like that. And you know what? If you weren't looking at the TV, you damn sure were looking at the TV <laughs> after that. <laughs> like, it's right up there with EA Sports. It's in the game. Uh, you really you got to cover the mouth for it. Yeah, you know, because it's all like distorted and stuff. Because we're, we're I'm talking like you know the voice from back in '94, '95, whatever. All right. Um. Okay, so from excitement like that, we go to just internet people kind of being awful. Um, a uh, big YouTuber by the name of Kurt, I'm going to probably mispronounce the last name, Fennec, F-E-N-E-C-H, or Kurt0411, um, was a FIFA pro, pro player um, and who just has been really dissing on EA lately. And I don't mean like, wow, EA sucks, you know, guilty. Um, I mean like at events, shit-talking them and their employees. He has already been banned from professional events uh, for all EA games, although FIFA was, was uh, the one that was his thing. It's like he had, he had been banned from playing anything, you know, at any of those events. And then, you know, railing about that on YouTube, on Twitter, whatever... Uh, more or less mobilized people and said that the FIFA team should be fired and just a bunch of really childish stuff. Um, you know, Twitter accounts got hacked of, of EA uh, staff members. Oh my god! And it's just oh. such piss baby bullshit. Anyway, EA finally retaliated and uh, escalated again and said, well, now you don't get to play any of our games and banned his account. He is like... <laughs> Name made as a pro FIFA player. You, now you can't play FIFA. Now you can't play any EA thing. You can't go play Battlefront 2. EA, the company that literally wants, if they could, to sell you an executive just perpetually sticking their hands in your pockets and taking out all the money they have in there, finally said to somebody, your money's no good here. Yeah. That's the funniest part about this whole thing. Also, guess what? What's up, Penguin? Welcome to the program. Um, um, if you're going to get sponsored by somebody, don't talk and you're shit about paid them. By them. If you're going My to God. talk, if you're going to talk negatively about them, don't do it on the platform they pay you to be on. Yeah, don't do that. You're an idiot. You are living a dream that so many gamers would love to have. You're mm. doing it poorly and like an ass clown, but. Um, 
Um, Hilarious! In November, after a series of code of conduct violations, banned from competing or attending any EA Sports FIFA 20 Global Series events. Since that time, Kurt has continued to post abusive and threatening messages and videos about EA employees and competitive players on social media, and he has encouraged others to do the same. His messages have crossed a line of decency into very personal attacks and breach our terms of service. We will not tolerate threatening you- behavior. As a result... Today, Kurt's EA account will be banned from playing our games and accessing our service due to these serious and repeated violations. That's the press release straight from EA's mouth. So you're talking about the Overwatch player XQC, right? Because <laughs> that's all he ever does now is bitch about how he's not in the uh, Overwatch <laughs> League anymore and how bad it is and how this yeah. is broken and that's bad. And then he's streaming Overwatch. Yeah. It's like... like <laughs> stop. You can't have... Well, Shit you can get have off it. the pot. You can have it on both ends, actually, because you are having it. But... Uh, not for who's this guy again? Not not for Kurt. Not not for Kurt 0411. Don't be a shit nugget online. Just, just plain and simple. That's that's literally some of the funniest shit I think I've ever heard. It's that, like, amazing. It would it, like it takes so much for one of these giants to turn around and be like no. Yeah, it takes so much time for a triple like so for example, if you and I were to suddenly go off on a, on a on a unrelated tangent and rant about this person at insane games or that person or this or that and the other, oh, yeah. we would be instantly removed from the network. If if we, as if as we, is deserved. If yeah, like but if it's we because should talk insane games TV or even insane games as a store, um and, and did so oh, like publicly on air, whatever, we would deserve to get the boot. Like one hundred percent. But that's the difference. If we is, have complaints, we always leave them to ourselves and not say wait, what? <laughs> but but, oh, you speak for yourself. <laughs> but I will speak for everyone. I go. In the room. I go. Logan agrees with me. I go straight to Dan if I have a problem. That's and, then and Dan, that's what this guy should. And then have done Dan inevitably turns around and tells me that he'll me. look into it, and then I nods and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and like if this guy had legitimate concerns, he should have brought them to EA instead of going public and pissing or, and moaning and view whoring. Or if you're trying to view whore people, you know what does really well? Adding other ce- other internet celebrities. Because that's all they do now, is add each other, and then they wind up hating each other, and then three weeks later, they're streaming together, talking about uh, how they have a barbecue after the stream, or this and that and the other. Oh my god. And then Dan adds it to his list. Exactly. <laughs> the amount of things that I have done in the presence of Dan that he's like, nope, Dave is never to do that ever again in this store. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the dead to him list. Yes. Oh, he does. <laughs> that's what he means. Uh, um, what is it? Plastic spoons? There's a there's a long there's a long thing the about about guys. why like when you use all the plastic spoons and then Dan doesn't get one and then he actually has like soup like what are you supposed to do eat it with your hands like no but plastic, plastic knives, knives. All right, C- CJ Playmakers got us keeping us honest I absolutely love CJ do you have a copy of the Dead to Dan list somewhere because I know you sent me a photo at one point I have the original not in this notebook but I have the original away in the archives. Um... But I love the fact that you are also LeBron James in the NBA. Oh my God! Mwah. Please, CJ, tune in on um, on the new Insane Games TV iteration of Behind the Counter. Yep, Monday night. And start nights. asking him for what's further dead to Dan. Yeah. Um, oh, I would love to see that. Because I would, I would love to have that segment back, even if I can't announce it. <sighs> okay. So, I mean, clearly, we we mentioned a little bit of what we wanted to go over. I don't have any of it written down. So, uh, uh, as. Shit heel online being a shit heel. What's next? That's so damn funny. Oh my god! I, like I literally cannot believe that someone got paid to make a living off of something that a lot of us do for free time and a pastime and passionately. Yeah. But we don't make a living doing this. Logan's the only one driving a BMW out of here. All right. Yeah. That's so. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Logan's the I'm only over one here, like, in I don't the dog. He drives. So, <laughs> it's, it, does he have like the Power Wheels BMW? Now, what what makes me laugh is I'm sorry, Logan, because this what happened was Steve kind of ruined this for a lot of folks. Where Steve had a birthday not not too too in the distant future, distant past, where he was like, by the way, I'm 21, I'm uh, you know, turning 21, and all of us literally did that Santa Claus thing where just the beard got really white, and all of us were like, ha, ah, we're really old. Like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, Auntie Steve. Uh, the Steve prompt does not work in the Insane Games TV chat. But if it makes you feel any better, he does know that we do it, and it makes him very excited. Um, <laughs> it works over in your Discord, I think. It it does work in the Discord. Nightbot is living there, but 
that's because of that, uh, I will never, I will forever never trust what will, like people's ages and things like that. So yeah. everyone's forty six from now on. <laughs> everyone's forty six. Everyone's forty six because uh, when you're working with somebody, it doesn't matter. I can show you my ID and prove that I'm eighteen. We're old, Boater. We are old men. What can I? Throw? So wait a minute. Is the is the Mario movie older than him? Oh yeah. Oh god yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't... That man plays professional sports, okay? I wouldn't throw things at him because he's liable to throw them back what and sport? it's going to hurt. What sport? Play football lacrosse. Lacrosse! Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's got leverage to accelerate the thing. I'm going to reclaim that for you. Let's <laughs> find something halfway decent So the basket. All I'm saying is that next week, next week, I think Logan should get to throw things at us. <laughs> oh, speaking of punishments... Oh, I'm so glad that you brought it up and I just happened to mention the word punishment because uh, if you watched the weekend Wednesday and uh, for those of you who watched the trailer previews for the episode, I am so excited that you guys are here because um, I'm going to pull up a picture and I'm going to show it to everyone in in the program there watching. Were, there were various prompts. Are you pulling up the one that got me the first bean? I'm pulling up the one of why you're eating a bean on the program. Yeah, I actually owe two beans. I forget what the second one was for. I think it was just for a bad pun. But the first one, we were, we were doing prompts and we were taking pictures and sharing them in a shared Google Drive. And it was really fun. It was a really cool way of organizing it, Dave. I really appreciate that. Um, so it was... Oh. Yeah. So we were drawing selfies. Yep. Yeah, there was one that was sketch a selfie. Um, and then Boater does this. <laughs> Sends in one of those those filters. Take a photo, send it in with a filter. So. And, and the thing is, before that, I'm like, uh, this was, uh, LOL, this is cheating. And I think it was Alec that's like, nothing's cheating. I'm like, oh, this is cheating. <laughs> so, Boater, why don't you come sit here and eat of one of the. Oh, right, yeah, because we're around the So, there. chat, uh, we've got a birthday cake or dirty dishwater, a tutti frutti or stinky socks, or a rotten egg or buttered popcorn. For this, not participating in the art prompts and sending a Snapchat filter. It's not, it wasn't Snapchat, it was photo funny of something. It's connected Ah, Boater, the Houston Astros of the weekend Wednesday. <laughs> I don't even know, like, enough to, like, be properly offended at that. I just don't feel good. It's the Houston, uh, I, I, I can't even... They used uh, something in their shirt so that the like, guy wasn't giving stealing signs with his hands. So they're giving stealing signs discreetly. Basically, wow. the, so the, they, the hitters so were stealing. The other team couldn't counteract their signs. Wow. Okay. Well, so, we have a vote for Rotten Egg from my dearest who knows that that one is my socks. bane. By the way, smile for the camera because Penguin's actually here. And he's not Hello, Penguin. boozled. Hello, so. Penguin. Uh, okay. So, and you said a stinky socks. So we had a rotten egg and a stinky socks. Uh, which one is a tutti frutti or stinky socks? So that was one of these guys. And we will do the buttered popcorn or rotten egg first. Oh, I have many regrets in life. Is it rotten egg? Not as rotten as some. Is it rotten egg? It's rotten egg. It's rotten egg! <laughs> Puke like a freshman! Puke it up! <laughs> oh, just saw Jackson eat them. Got every bad one in the thing. Meanwhile, Dan has like an unbroken streak of like seven in a row. <laughs> was he eating them out of there? Wow! Way to steal our gimmick 2v Tuesdays! No, no, it wasn't on, it was on, it wasn't on stream. Like wow, way to eat our gimmicks off stream, 2v Tuesdays! <laughs> Alright, and the second, the second one? one? Tutti Fruity or Stinky Socks? This is the quality content people tune into a nerdy oh, yeah. chat show for. Yeah, exactly. Watching right. people eat donuts from KFC and uh, and Boater eating uh, Austin nasty, awful beans. That just tasted like nothing. Yeah, I got nothing on that Ooh. one. Alright, get out of there. <laughs> Your fault. <laughs> I have, I have, I have had my punishment. Ah, uh, to me Tuesdays, the New England Patriots of Nerd Classic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Oh, good shit. I'm eating this birthday cake one. Because it's got to be right. birthday cake. Switch this back. It's not birthday cake. Why did I do that? Why, Why did you do that? Why did I eat that? I'll live to regret my life. But just not today. And not for this. Oh, boy. So, while I slowly die of my decisions to freely eat of nasty flavored things, um, Boater, you, rec you and I have both recently had a lot of car troubles. Yes. And when my car, well, let's, let's call a spade a spade, shit the bed, uh -huh. I had to go through all the trouble of going to websites and then going to the lots and looking at the inventories. And then talking to their bank representatives, then talking to my bank representatives, and this and that and the other. And long story short, through some excellent work by a local dealership whose I would sponsor and endorse, but then you kind of peased me off later. But they are locally in Queensbury based. Um, oh, God. Dave doesn't learn from mistakes. No. No. No, no I don't. He does not. So, um,. I, it took me about a week to yeah. get a car from dead car to, to me to driving and being new, able to drive a car. car. Okay. Boater, you recently, unfortunately, lost a vehicle that you had named and, and had a lot of time invested in and things like that. Well, I still have the vehicle. I just can't afford to drop in the 6000 that it needs for repairs in short order. Well, <laughs> so it's dead to you. Let's... Like I, I, dead I to Boater! I don't want to, you know, yeah, be it, insensitive, yes. but the vehicle yes. is dead. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's capable of driving itself to... CarMax or wherever to get a few hundred bucks in trade-in. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yes, I went through a process as well, starting with looking online and realizing, you know, okay, so there's CarMax and I can look at that and also, what's this thing called Carvana? Which is in the cup here. What is this thing? And basically it's buying a car online. Which is only really stepping in uh, in place of that go to places and look at the lots and see what's there. Because after that, I still had to, you know, network with the, the credit union and the insurance and do all the things to have these things talk to each other because I didn't finance through Carvana, which would have been simpler. Um, and, uh, but in the end, what I did was that I went online and I found a car and I said, I think I like this car. And I clicked purchase. I put it, I put the car in my shopping cart and I click buy. <laughs> it, like, as much as there was other running around and some pain in the ass things to do, it was still kind of trippy. It was a weird moment that is documented on my YouTube channel because I was blogging the whole time through. Um, Carvana is a thing that does mostly, um, that does mostly online, uh, purchasing for vehicles. Um, they have a local market in... Albany, which basically means that an employee dropped it off rather than just some dude with a tow truck. Um, they also have locations that are called vending machines, where you buy it ahead of time and you do all that shopping online and getting the you know financing set up, whether it's straight through Carvana, which mm -hmm. they make that super easy, or if you do it through a credit union because you're going to get a better rate if you have even halfway decent credit. Adult stuff. But then you have all that worked out and you go to their vending machine location and you fill out your paperwork, which for New York, there was a buttload of paperwork. The guy was like, I hate delivering to New York because it has the most paperwork of anywhere I've delivered to. <laughs> you fill all that out, and then they give you a big coin thing. And you go outside because outside the building is a tower about four or five stories high that is four-sided and a car on each side. They call it a vending machine. You drop this oversized comedy coin in, and the vending machine goes, oh... Getting your car now, sir. Over the course of about 15 minutes to do it slowly and not damage anything, raises a platform, goes, Here you go. Now, stop. Because I've bought from vending machines before. I am a connoisseur of vendables, delicious, and also egg salad for some reason. But I have watched vending machines fail Don't. in spectacular ways, such as when the bag of chips gets stuck on the edge and then it kind of tips, so you have to buy a second bag of chips. Could you imagine doing that? So I don't Buying have, a second car so I don't, to knock yeah, the I original car? I don't have car? personal experience with the vending machine because I did the delivery thing, but you cannot tip the building. Um, Anticost Prime knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, you, you cannot say, oh, gee, my RAV4 didn't come out. Time to drop a, a Tundra on it and see, maybe I'll get two cars for one. 
Or I actually I had to pay for both cars anyway. But you can't go up to the vending machine and say, oh, somebody got upset because their uh, Chevy Malibu just didn't make it all the way down, so let me buy the one car and then get two when it falls on it. Um, I think all that's these fair. Of vending machines, I think that you know? would be very fair. Um, I would appreciate that. I would also appreciate if... My Sprite isn't supposed to blast me in the ice. Yeah, well, I mean, like, that car gets shaken on the way down and, you know, springs a head gasket leak and there's just oil everywhere. It's the equivalent. I, if I'll, you're not getting I'll, an electric car, which I kind of did. All I'm picturing is that is that effect where you buy one soda and the machine just kind of goes, To the hills! And just opens all of them and just pours them out. And just the cars... <laughs> Come dumping down to the bottom as you stand there. <laughs> Here's all your cars. And I could just picture, like... The car vending machine as a doodle. Done. Next, yep, next, next, next time we do time. one of those art yep. streams, which is going to be sooner rather than later, by the way, because that was a lot of fun. Start just like shotgun. shotgunning cars into the air. <laughs> yeah. The Stone Cold Steve Austin theme starts playing, and it's just shooting cars out the windows at people. And then, of course, Mag- you know, uh, Magnificent Seven. Bum, bum, ba, dum, bum, ba, ba, da, da. <laughs> or no, no, uh, 1812 Overture. <laughs> Where you're left standing there saying, can I, can I just keep the coin then if I'm not getting the car? Like, can I just, can I have this oversized? <laughs> Murica! <laughs> uh, t- I fashion it into a belt buckle. We're going we're gonna to ride this pony home. Oh, God. Uh, um, this is, so I'm very excited to see that this whole Carvana thing, because I remember seeing a preview for the car vending machines. Yeah, which, which is, is the like how time. they sell their gimmick. It's 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 like a halo thing that attracts attention to them. Absolutely. But I'm happy to see the fact that this whole, you know, Anticost Prime and some of our friends aren't locally related. So when I say the term huge, mm. it doesn't mean anything to you, mm. except that that was a really obnoxious way of saying it, and you don't want to hear that every 15 minutes on the TV, but if you watch anything local Car- in public Carvana access... is similar to CarMax in that it's just, it's the price. It's a no-haggle thing. You know, CarMax is, you go to the place and they're on the lot and you look there, but the price is the price is the price, and they can do the uh, financing through that, whatever. Carvana is exactly the same, except that it's all online and the cars are tucked away in warehouses. Um, you know, it's, it's used cars. Uh, it was great because they have a referral program where, and a really active subreddit, but anyone that, uh, gets a car has like five or 10, in my case, 10 referral codes they can hand out for $500 off a car at Carvana. And then after the seven day return period is up, which is great because I'm buying a car sight unseen. I like the option of seven days or 400 miles to say, Ooh, you know what? I actually don't think this is the one because <laughs> it the... fell from the vending machine and kind of pulls to the left now. And I don't yeah, know exactly. <laughs> I want. I, I like having the the return period. After that, then the person that gave the the code gets a hundred bucks. So like, it's an online. So even company. if you return it, you get no. So after the seven day return policy, it's like all right, they're not going to return it. You know, like, when you're buying it, it's five hundred dollars off the price. Um, if you give that referral code, then your referral credit is a hundred bucks for each person that you refer. Nice. Um, so, if you're looking to get a used car, I have codes as of this moment. Um, type in chat, uh, I want one. <laughs> uh, reach out to me on social media. I actually already had someone uh, message me on Voterbug on Facebook for a code. <laughs> so, save you some money, courtesy of ner- Boaterbug of the Nerd Glasses. Um, on Games yeah, TV. so it's, it's, it's neat, like... Um, the credit union was like, oh, okay, yeah, we can do this. And the banks were like, oh, oh we're cutting uh, the check, the cashier's check for the finance because you're doing... Okay, yeah, that's fine. Oh, are they the ones with the vending machine thing? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Um, the insurance, like, everyone got it. It wasn't this whole new concept that was a pain in the ass because I did go through a bunch of third-party stuff. I did the financing on my own, um, which had the potential to be a huge headache. As it was, it was a medium headache for various reasons because of timing. Um, but everyone was on board and everyone worked together. Just like, it's like, all right, everybody hold hands. And everybody made that effort. Dave, you know, hold my hand. Everybody made this effort. Even if they didn't quite get each other at first, they got there. (laughs) Um, so that fumbling that you saw there was getting a car at Carvana doing all your own thing with, again, with them financing their together. It's good. So yeah, it was, (laughs) grab my hand. Uh, (laughs) Uh, it, it worked, and now I have a car with uh, under 30,000 miles on it, as opposed to my old car that had 215,000. 
so I'm happy. Uh, I told Welcome a friend to I was the chat, Joey. By the way, great to see you. Hope you are well, my friend. Uh, um, I told uh, I, I told a friend I was getting a Chevy Volt, and he was like, "Oh!" And he sent a uh, picture of the guy from the second Transformers movie. That was like, GM was like, "Oh, we have this new vehicle coming out, so we need you to have a character that is that vehicle in the movie." And he was shoehorned into about half of the group scenes. I didn't watch Transformers movies. I'm not going to hit you for that one. I think the first one's worth it, mostly. I'm not going to hit you for the rest. It's, uh... It'll be, it'll be really tough, though. The new of which pace if... for the Autobots is the Carvana vending machine. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll be... Autobots, the, that'll insert be... coin and fall out! <laughs> no, like, well, that'll, that'll be it. Like, the Autobots just need to... That'll be the next thing. Like, they need to fight this evil corporation to get the little coins. Because for some reason, the, the casing we made out of unobtainium... Yeah. Um, uh, my friend Joey saying uh, it was Bumblebee <laughs> from the movies yep, that yep, was yep. The, they redesigned him into something else. No, no, no. That was um, the new Camaro um, for in the first movie where they made him the at the time the the new Camaro uh, for that. The Volt I mean, is what literally it was a blue 2010 Chevy Volt. The only thing that he did that impacted the plot was that he linked two like halves of a transformer and sent electricity through them to fuse them. Which was, again, shoehorned in because they wanted the character in there. He's gone in half the group shots. He's just there in the other half. So, I... J we tell you what, not the Transformers <clears throat> movies were super... Like, we we're, we joke about the product placement that we saw on, like, Homefront, whatever. The Transformers movies were bad. All the Autobots were GM vehicles. I and tell GM, you what. <laughs> and GM just had, like, all the creative control for that kind of thing over there. Didn't um, Steve get a car as well, like, two months ago or something? I, Steve did get a new car, but he did it the stupid way, with all the footwork and paperwork and... Steving around upstate New York, <laughs> and being able to drive off the lot with it once everything was finalized—that would have been nice. I, mean, I had to wait two weeks is, for delivery. That is what he did, and I, yeah, I waited two weeks for delivery. It was delayed on the same day that uh, my car's battery died. I'm like, oh crap! Uh, I guess I could have a loaner for a couple days. Oh well, it's going to be lo <laughs> longer than a couple days. Oh, and the loaner is a full-size Silverado pickup. That by far was the funniest part. About, uh, uh, Boater is not a, a truck guy. No, I had a Saturn Ion, a compact car. I got a Chevy Volt, a compact car. I got a full-size pickup. But aren't you more than, uh, taller than six feet? Yeah, I'm six foot two. I would really appreciate getting that moment where someone, like, honks their horn at you, and you unfold six times to get out of your car for the person to go, Hold on. Mama! Like, Among other things, <laughs> number one, uh, I, I, I said compact, not subcompact, not... K car, whatever. Number two, I'm not intimidating. Okay, there was a there was a Twitter thing that was like respond on a scale from one to ten. How intimidating are you? Then retweet it and people can share theirs. Nobody shared it on mine, but that's fine. I think I said everything I need to. I said two out of ten. I said it's not a zero uh, because two. I said it's not a zero because you started the scale of one. You said one to ten, uh, and I said it's not a one because I'm over six foot and I'm giving myself a point for that over six foot. But it has been said. In the past, and it is now often quoted that I as in, I am as intimidating. Shut up! I am as intimidating. I haven't even got to the funny part because Demon Dragon just said it. Yes, I'm as intimidating as a stale pop tart. Thank you, Steph. <laughs> oh man! I. I think that was my <laughs> sister. If she wasn't the one that said it, she was certainly the one that popularized it. Oh, Rafe, if you are, you, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How do you deal with a car that has to be re resized if you gain five pounds or so? <laughs> Hi, Tom. <laughs> um, I. I, again, I just, I can't, I can't unpicture that whole idea of, because you and I do the, do videos and things, and Boater has to consistently be the one. Oh, oh to, yeah. To, like, so when, but like, I'm, I'm now almost at Boater's height when I had to turn the chair up like this. Boater has to constantly do this jobby. 
Yeah, and no, he's like, still too tall to the, match our heads the on thing the program. Is, like here, it's fine, but when we're sitting right next to each other uh, for doing the let's plays that are out of my channel, it's like, all right, we need to get our. Okay, cool. There we go. This is this has been a, 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 a fantastic episode, and I'm so excited for all of you folks who are watching today who are, are chatting with us. Make sure, by the way, if you're watching on Facebook, that you like this page that I've shared on Facebook, because yep. I see a lot of you here. Uh, if you're Just watching- Just get Dave a booster seat. I do have a booster seat, because watch this. Watch this now. Well, oh here God, you do. That is just a bit too tall for my fat I'm ass. Gonna, I'm gonna get. You, I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. I'm just gonna get you a phone book for when we're shooting over at my place. <gasps> I would love to sit on. a I phone would book. have to spend fifty dollars to find a phone book, probably. I'd just steal one from a doctor's office. They still have them. If, if you were gonna say payphone, I was gonna say where do I spend the five hundred dollars to get a payphone? <laughs> um, okay, so. Yeah, we, we love doing this show, and we love the community. And the last thing that we want to hit tonight is a community question that we put out there. Dave, back on in this. Do they place. still make phone books? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, for for 86-year-old Aunt Doris kind of thing, yeah. Um, it's I don't think they deliver them door-to-door -door anymore. It's certainly not unsolicited. Not in your area, they don't. But uh, certainly if I visit my beloved family, there is probably a shelf full of old phone books that I could easily use to prop mine ass up. Can you, would you be able to get enough to like create body armor for yourself? Just Tom, wondering, could you, could you answer question. that in chat by the way? Do you know if at the house there is enough phone books for me to make a suit of armor? Um, I want this. Because, I want uh, this like I've never wanted anything before in my life. Because So on my Discord, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I posted a question. Yes. Um, and Or maybe we can stack them for Dave's chair. Just yeah. make a chair out of phone books. <laughs> um, Dave the Knight of Yellow Pages. I love it. Um, Community question. Five so uh, I put in... This week's question is more in a gaming mindset, but if folks want uh -huh. to answer outside the realm, then please do. And you in chat, when you hear the question, just state an answer and spit it out in chat as well. We would love to hear from you. In Link's Awakening, the Switch version, I got offered a power-up that could be taken to raise my attack or reduce damage taken. Normally, I go for power all day, every day, but in this particular game, I know that I I'm a damage sponge, so I went for the better defense. But I ask you all, what would you opt for in a video game? More power, better defense, or something else? Um, I, so, uh, well, Maybe scale, but not plate. Tom, you're on. <laughs> you know? Um, so, so we had a lot, a fair amount of responses in the Discord. I think we'll read those first, we'll go, go from in chat, we'll say what we think. Sound good? Would love to. So the first responder was Akai1988, by the way, a uh, member of Fry Dave Streaming and a constant supporter of Insane Games in all of its facets. Um, so he basically came back with, it depends on if it's a leveling up thing and what is its purpose. Um, although he did tell me later that it is a power thing. Okay. Um, Antiklaus Prime... Mwah, said, if I had skill points to distribute, I most of the time go for half my points into strength or power, and the other half in distributed between defense and agility. Yep. So I like the idea that it being well-rounded, so being a well-rounded tank, a tank that can also do yeah, like the MC Hammer I shuffle, mean, leading, left and right. But leading towards, so like prioritizing attack power, but certainly making sure that the others aren't left unintended, not being a glass cannon. Um, uh, more like rigor mortis in chat says damage reduction, which is certainly defense. It's not exactly armor, uh, but it is a very similar kind of thing that says, hey, you will be able to hit me a few more times. If, you've, if you're up against a boss that's been one-hitting you, that's been chunking you, then uh, like reducing that so that you can... Survivability, basically. Yeah. Um, so, and there's a few different ways that survivability is done. Damage reduction is probably my preferred method of that as well. Uh, Vladdy93 so it depends on the game mostly. In Doom, I usually go for more power, the bigger explosions, the largest shotgun, the massive final blow. In other games, I usually upgrade the other category that allows me for more unique attacks and alt powers, like Paper Mario's fire power. Mm -hmm. Flower oh. power, excuse me. 
firepower in Paper Mario would be a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Demon Dragon says, depends on the character I'm playing, but I lean towards having defense. And again, if, if power and defense aren't necessarily your stats, you know, in every game there's a speed statistic. There's, in, in Dark Souls, isn't there like a, a, a dodge that you can upgrade and things like that? Like, It's been a long time since I played Dark Souls. Uh, in, in Discord, the last one to participate in the Discord for this week's question was, uh, was Rafe, or Rafe Wolf, or yep. Jen as we know her. Um, depends on the game. You know, I spend the majority of my time in WoW these days. While defense is important, the best defense is truly a good offense, said Mel, the cook on Alice. Um, you need enough defense to survive a major hit, uh, one shot ability that a boss does after that, pump into offense. So it does, doesn't get a chance to cast in the ability very often. So you want enough defense to survive, but generally you want a buttload of offense because you can end a fight more readily with more offense than more defense. Yeah, and I think that's a, a, a pretty good answer, and, and I agree with that too. I would much rather make sure that I have just enough defense so that I don't get cheaply one-shotted by stuff, but then I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes chipping away at something's infinite health bar. I want to chunk it. Um, but I typically don't go for attack power. I go for attack speed. I raise my DPS, my attack power, by just throwing or hitting or something more often. Uh, I mentioned Archero last month when we were talking about our favorite games of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a mobile game. And given the option between a pack attack power and attack speed, I'll take attack speed all the time. Among other things, I also expect that I'm going to miss a decent amount of the time. So if I'm just throwing more attacks out there, more attacks are going to hit if I'm throwing them out more rapidly. Um, so attack speed is uh, what I would prioritize prioritize while making sure that the others obviously aren't neglected as well. Ooh. Uh, death by a thousand bee stings. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the uh, the flurry attack thing is like here. Uh, and and that carries over like when you go into first person shooters. Shotguns are fun. Have a good fun. one, Joey. Great to see you. Shotguns are fun. Um, and like big power kind of things like that. But I, and like Sniper rifles if nobody's moving, but as soon as we get into, like, a combat's moving around, I much prefer something with a higher rate of fire because I figure I'm going to miss more, and I don't want a more powerful gun that I'm just going to miss a bunch of times with. I want to be able to spray and pray a little. So that's me with attack speed. So the Gretzky method, says CJ Playmaker. Wow. Um, next level of question says, more like rigor mortis, what does your answer say about you as a player, person, potential life success? Wow, attack speed is basically, like... That doesn't really carry over into my life. If it carried over into my life... Or is it how quickly you can act on an, uh, 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 something you do? Are you rather sluggish when someone says, by the way, can you hand me that thing? Does it take you 10, 15 minutes to motivate, get up and go do it? Or are you someone that snaps to and is moving around so quickly that people tell you to sit down and be quiet and be over there? Like, <laughs> Depends on how hard my depression feels that day. <laughs> um, I, I, like, if, I right feel in the like, feels. I feel like the attack speed thing would be like, oh yes, cool, I've held uh, 17 jobs in the past two years. Of just waiting for that one that's gonna stick. Um, whereas, I, I don't know, like that's what uh, attack speed would feel like to me in life. Um, defense would be, I'm in, I'm in this one job that I don't make a ton at, but it's super safe. I'm getting a bunch. For some reason, I'm relating it to careers. Like it's super safe. I have uh, a bunch of benefits and stuff. Defense is like, yeah, I don't make a ton of money, but I'm taken care of, and I know that I have a place here. Okay. Um, and attack power, I think, is like, yes, I have this job, but I'm sending out all, like, really stepping up the resume, making sure that it looks as good as possible so that when I finally do find a job that I want to get, rather than attack speed being applied to all the jobs, when I find the job I do want to get, I make sure that I get it by having it perfectly crafted, boom, cover letter. <laughs> And so in that respect, I'm definitely attack power when it comes to jobs. <laughs> when you frame it in that way, that makes a lot of sense. Or defense, because I stayed in my last job I really didn't like that much, but I, I liked the people that I, I was comfortable in it. So I guess I was defense, is that I was comfortable in it, and it was fine, and I was making enough, and not trying to find something that would make me happier. Until both me and the boss were like, I 
think we're done here. <laughs> it was a mutual thing. Tom brings up the, sounds like a gag about the st squad of Imperial Stormtroopers against Federation red shirts. Hundred shots fires. None connected, but the red shirts died anyway. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah. If you don't have the fortitude to stand up for li to, to battles in life, that's okay. You've definitely got a friend who puts stats into that. <laughs> yeah, make sure, I mean, whatever you prioritize in your character build, make sure that you have a party that will support that and you, that you have a well-rounded adventuring party. And if you don't, find one here on Insane Games TV, because God knows there's enough people to make up quite the jovial party that will definitely be looking over at you, handcuffs on, going, what... What happened now? <laughs> Wait, where did the handcuffs come into this? I'm excited. Want... Oh, you mean arrested. Okay. Yes, arrested. Okay. You over there with your stuff. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's a kind of powerful way to end the this episode of Nerd Glasses. Is that, like, I'm... everyone specs differently. Like, everyone, like, there are, uh, however it relates to real life, there are your strength builds, your dexterity builds, your constitution builds, your wisdom builds, your int, your charisma builds, because God knows Dave doesn't have much else going for him. He's a charisma build. Um, he's, he's the bard. And so you are most successful when you have a well-rounded party of all these different types of people who can work together and complement each other. That is how best to live life, I think, by finding people that complement what you do and then being able to get one-shotted because you have a shitty DM. Demon Dragon. But Capitalism! What about Death Stranding? Well, unfortunately, it was the last thing on our auxiliary list, and we actually didn't get to half of the articles or discussion topics that we cropped up. So once again... So despite the fact that Dave spent his entire week off from the other job last week playing Death Stranding... Yeah. Sorry, Death Stranding. Hold you to next week. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned right here on whichever platform you are watching. YouTube, Mixer, Facebook, or Twitch. Because after this program begins anew. A rise above the head and shoulders of others. An ending of a day on a program. The Citadel. Hi, I'm going to stream some more Mad Max. Uh, probably something different going on uh, next week, but for tonight... We've got Mad Max, and we're going to be following some story stuff because the last uh, last week was just faffing about in the wasteland. So, story stuff in Mad Max this week, and uh, we're going to see what we can do and who we can punch. By the way, I've got a I've got a, a twenty percent a twenty percent bet that it's just going to be more faffing. By the way, oh this yeah, is almost least. exactly what Boder said last week. No, and last then, week I knew it was going to be faffing around. <laughs> Mad Max is so criminally underrated. Ah, oh. And you know what? That's the discussion topic for next week. Make sure to check out my Discord at The Weekend Wednesday. And if you want the link on other social media platforms, you can find me at dam314 at twitch.tv to get looked up. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this has been another very successful episode of, uh, of the Nerd Glasses because of folks like you watching at home. Thank you so much for joining us. This was awesome because we had so much fun discussing three topics that we didn't actually get to the <laughs> other 14 that we said just in case it was just Boder and I talking to each other. Um, yeah. So make sure to keep it tuned right here starting in, what, 10 minutes? If that, yeah. We're going to start the pre-roll as soon as possible, uh, and we got to make sure that the Xbox is updated because there was a dashboard update, and we should, probably should have... I told him to pop the disc in ahead of time. We'll see. Anyway, I'll see you guys at the Citadel right after this. Thanks, everybody. And Make sure, by the way, in the last thing, if you're on Twitch, if you're on Mixer, that little corner up there, hit that little, uh, it's got that a heart little heart or something. The like button on uh, on uh, on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube, or like it on Facebook to let us know that hey, I enjoyed that program, or hey, I want to tell those guys to shut up. But <laughs> I mean, nobody's told us to just shut up in, in chat so far. So well, I'm kind of no one's it. had the balls to say it to us, but certainly dumber have tried by threatening off camera. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys Andy Claus Prime unfollowing us. How dare you? I did. He said, it, he said if you're not already following us, <laughs> like, get out of here. Good night. <laughs> eh, I'm not going to throw this because that might actually break the camera. Much love to you folks, and we will see you next week right here on The Nerd Glasses on Insane Games TV. Bye!